Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I am re-uploading our Doom Eternal benchmark after discovering that there was in fact an issue with some of the results. At this point I'm not entirely sure what was causing the problem, but whatever it was, it was consistently causing certain GPUs to underperform anywhere from 5 to 15%. It affected AMD GPUs a little more than Nvidia GPUs, but in many instances both did take a performance hit. Whatever was going on, it only impacted performance in Doom Eternal. All the other games that we regular test with were performing as expected, as were many of the applications we also use for benchmarking system performance. While diagnosing and trying to solve what the performance issue may be, I ended up removing all the system drivers, uh, removed the entire game and all its configuration files, and then eventually this resulted in more consistent performance. I also did a lot more troubleshooting than that. I got a second test system, uh, installed the game on that, uh, and I did a fresh install of Windows 10. Eventually all three of those things are uh, lined up after I cleaned out the Intel GPU test rig, basically got rid of our install of Doom. Again, not 100% sure if that was the problem or there was some other underlying driver problem, but whatever the case was, I'm pretty sure, well, I'm very confident we've gotten to the bottom of it. And I should just note that for testing, we don't use any kind of overlays because they often cause performance related issues. So stuff like the Steam overlays disabled, we never use that anyway. And for testing, we use OCAT or OCAT, however you want to pronounce that, uh, with the overlay mode disabled, as again, that often causes problems in games. So yeah, not entirely sure what was causing the sort of overhead issue seen previously. And I'm not sure why it impacted AMD GPUs more than Nvidia GPUs and probably some kind of driver issue there. Anyway, once the error was discovered and the results were confirmed to be inaccurate, I immediately pulled down that video and got back to work. Uh, pulling a video is a seriously big deal and it's not something we want to do. We pretty much want to avoid it at all costs and it's something we haven't had to do in years now. Uh, that video was sponsored and I've chosen not to run that sponsor spot again in this video since many of you will be re-watching it and I don't want you to have to watch our sponsor spot again due to my mistake. Now, on a sort of bright side, by basically retesting all these GPUs three times, diagnosing and then retesting finally, I've discovered a few interesting things. And one of them means that some benchmarks using the ultra nightmare settings, they might not be accurate. In the original video, I spoke about the reason why I was using the Ultra preset and the reason being the enforced VRAM restrictions. The game will not allow you to exceed these VRAM restrictions. So as an example, six gigabyte cards can't use the next highest preset nightmare at resolutions above 1080p. And given that we ideally want to provide you guys with apples to apples data, so you can see how much faster, let's say an RTX 2070 Super is when compared to a GTX 1070, this is the best way to provide that information. With the Ultra preset, we can run at up to the 4K resolution with six gigabyte graphics cards. So that's the reason why we've chosen that preset. And as an example, four gigabyte and lower models can't use the Ultra preset as it uses 5.2 gigabytes of VRAM, or at least it allocates that much at 1080p. So you'll need to drop down to the high preset with four gigabyte cards. Some people did question this, claiming there is a workaround, and this is how tech sites who tested 3, 4, and 6 gigabyte graphics cards with the Ultra Nightmare settings at 1440p managed to run those tests. Here's an example of that workaround. So with a 5600 XT installed, you're limited to 6 gigabytes of VRAM usage, but at 1440p, the Ultra Nightmare settings call for 7 gigabytes of VRAM. So the game will not allow you to apply those settings, and it'll throw up a notice that says the following. There is insufficient video memory for these selected settings. Please lower them and try again. Now, if you click the back button, the settings are discarded and it reverts back to whatever you were using previously. However, if you click the social button or hit P, which does the same thing, the social menu will load and it tricks the settings menu. And upon returning, the ultra nightmare settings now appear to be applied. Thing is though, they're not really, at least not all of them. And here is the proof. I won't show the entire benchmark pass each time, but this will give you a pretty clear demonstration of what I mean. So using the Ultra preset at 1440p with the 5600 XT, this particular GPU tanks in performance, presumably because of the more limited VRAM buffer and the way AMD manages memory. At 1080p, it's just 7% slower than the RX 5700, but at 1440p, it's 33% slower. And I don't believe this is an error. I've replicated it numerous times now, but of course I would appreciate feedback from anyone using a 5600 XT. But anyway, here the 5600 XT averaged 68 FPS. Now, if we go back into the menu and trick it to use the nightmare settings, the 5600 XT actually becomes much faster. 
now averaging 93 FPS, making it 9% slow on the RX 5700, so a 37% performance boost when going from Ultra to Ultra Nightmare. Now, I should emphasize that this didn't always happen. Sometimes it was a little bit slower, other times it was just a little bit faster, and sometimes it was a lot faster. And if I wanted to, I could control this pretty accurately by manually selecting the texture pool size first, and then setting it back to Ultra Nightmare, and then doing the whole P thing. The same results were also seen when closing and relaunching the game after these changes had been applied, or allegedly applied. What I believe is happening here is, the game's simply auto-detecting these settings and adjusting them to get back within the VRAM limits, or it's simply just loading the last texture setting that worked within the limits. So while it says Ultra Nightmare, certain settings, most likely the texture pool, are being lowered below the Ultra Nightmare setting. I discovered all this when looking at results from tech sites who were claiming the 5600 XT wasn't much slower than the RX 5700 at 1440p using the Ultra Nightmare settings, and this had me a bit puzzled as I was seeing performance tank with the Ultra settings. Unfortunately, the visual quality difference between these various settings is so small, it makes working out exactly what's going on here extremely difficult. But for now, it looks like, no, the dodgy P workaround simply doesn't work, and any results using this method will likely be invalid. So for now, I'll be sticking with the ultra quality preset as this allows us to test with six gigabyte cards above 1080p. Once again, for testing, I'm using an early section of the game right after the first Hell Priest has been terminated and all the results are based on a three run average. Just lastly, all testing has taken place on our standard GPU test rig, which features a Core i9 9900K clocked at five gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. Okay, let's jump into the updated benchmark results. First up, we have the 1080p results, and as I found previously, pretty much any modern GPU, as long as it has at least 6GB of VRAM, can deliver playable performance at 1080p. Here we see the 8GB 5500 XT averaged 91 FPS. The same level of performance is also seen from the RX 580 and 590. The RX 580 was a whopping 20% fast than the 1060, averaging 91 FPS and never dipping below 70 FPS, so a nice smooth experience there. The 5600 XT is a standout modern GPU in the 200 ish dollar price range, pumping out over 100 FPS at all times for 133 FPS on average. That made it 7% faster than the RTX 2060, and it even managed to outpace Vega 64. Moreover, the RX 5700 was only a further 8% faster, though that is a fairly typical margin, and it meant the 5700 still falls short of the 2060 Super in our testing. We also included the GTX 980 Ti, though it would seem as though Nvidia is yet to optimize for the Maxwell-based GPUs, as the 1660 Super smashed the 980 Ti out of the park, not something you'd necessarily expect to see. The 5700 XT is again impressive here, averaging 163 FPS, making it a few frames faster than the RTX 2060 Super. That said, the RTX 2070 Super was 15% faster, though keep in mind it does cost about 25% more. For those wondering, previously the 2070 Super was 19% faster, so really not a big change here, but having carried out fresh installs and tested across multiple systems, we're now confident in these results. It is worth noting though that in a less demanding test, AMD does perform better relative to Nvidia, so if we don't blow the barrels up and don't focus on the more demanding areas of this pass, the 5700 XT can get within 10% of the 2070 Super's performance. But for the purpose of this test and all our GPU tests, we aim to focus on the more demanding areas of the test section. Naturally, jumping up to 1440p pushes quite a few GPUs into and even just below 60fps. So for that smoother 60fps-like experience, you require a 5500XT, RX 580 or GTX 1660. For over 80 FPS on average, the GTX 1070, 1660 Ti, RTX 2060, 1070 Ti, and Vega 56 are all quite evenly matched. Then for the next big step up in performance, you require the RTX 2060 Super, 5700 XT, or Radeon 7. Beyond that though, it's all Nvidia with products such as the GTX 1080 Ti, RTX 2070 Super, RTX 2080, and so on. Now, for those wanting to game at 4K without any kind of resolution scaling trickery, for around 60 FPS, you'll want at very least an RTX 2060 Super, though ideally something more like the 5700 XT. Meanwhile, the RTX 2070 Super kept frame rates above 60 FPS throughout the duration of the test, while the RTX 2080 Ti powered through with ease. 
Interestingly, the 5600 XT continues to suffer, and now it's slower than even the 8GB 5500 XT, but the 6GB GeForce GPUs don't appear to suffer nearly as much with the RTX 2060 remaining quite strong. It's difficult to know if Nvidia is performing some kind of trickery at the driver level. The difference between AMD's 6 gigabyte performance and Nvidia's just seems to be too extreme. Now, when it comes to preset scaling, we see once again that the Ultra, Nightmare, and Ultra Nightmare settings are very similar in terms of performance, as long as you have 8 gigabytes or more VRAM available. For an actual performance boost, you'll need to drop down to the medium preset, and this resulted in an 8 to 10% increase in frame rate, while the low preset provided a further 5 to 6% increase. Dynamic resolution scaling seems to work very well in Doom Eternal. Again, I won't be analyzing image quality, but for the most part, it is very difficult to spot the differences. So this setting is worth having on if you need some extra frames. At 4K with a 60 FPS frame target, this boosted the RTX 2060 by 14% and a massive 94% for the 5600 XT as the lower resolution alleviates the VRAM bottleneck. The 5700 sees a more mild 11% performance increase. And then we see with a 120 FPS target that the 5700 managed a massive 45% boost, 23% for the 5600 XT, and then 38% for the RTX 2060. Okay, so there is our second go at testing Doom Eternal. What a fun journey this one's been. Overall, our opinion hasn't really changed. The game plays very well using the ultra quality settings at 1080p and the older sort of mid-range options such as the RX 570 and GTX 1060 play very well. Now, the Radeon performance still isn't quite as good as many of the tech sites are showing, but I am confident in our results and the test method used. That said, a Patreon member has presented a theory suggesting that perhaps Nvidia has heavily optimized the earlier stages of the game, so the section that I'm testing, that being the case, I will play a bit further into the game and do some more testing. Unfortunately, my first save game where I was attempting to do that ended up getting corrupted and you can't simply load back a copy of the save files or get someone else's save game. At least not that I'm aware of. If anyone knows sort of a workaround to get a save game working, that would be great because it would save me tons of time and energy and I don't really want to play the game for three, four, five hours or whatever and then get halfway through my testing and have the save game file corrupt again because I've alt tabbed out and the game's crashed or whatever. Very annoying. So yeah, if someone knows a solution for that, it would be greatly appreciated. Finally, I would like to just apologize for any inconvenience caused by the original results. And although these new findings, they don't change things too much, we obviously want to provide the most accurate results possible. So that's why the video was removed and the testing was updated. And I'm sure there'll be some AMD fans that still won't be happy with the margins but I am very confident in what we're showing here. I've validated these results on two different test systems now, as well as a fresh install of Windows with just the bare essentials to make sure again, there isn't something in the background there creating some kind of weird overhead for the AMD GPUs. I am willing to entertain the theory that the earlier sections of the game uh, that I test in favor Nvidia more. So again, this is something I will be looking into as we move forward. And something else I've noticed is AMD GPUs benefit a lot from more static passes. So clearing out all the dynamic elements first, you know, such as enemies, and then running the test again, essentially caching the benchmark pass. I'm reading over some of the tech sites, this is how they performed their benchmark. I noticed a few opted to remove all the dynamic elements for improved accuracy, which really does make sense. However, if I run the portion of my test that still allows me to travel back to the start, on the second pass for AMD, I'm seeing around a 10% boost in performance on average, whereas Nvidia only sees a 4% boost on average. So this method would lead to around a 6% improvement for AMD relative to competing Nvidia products. So I'm essentially not doing what is a cached benchmark pass. I'm pretty much testing as you would play. So after each pass is completed, I reload the checkpoint and start all over again. Anyway, at this point, a huge amount of time and energy has been invested to get here, and we have suffered a fairly large financial loss by removing the original video sponsor, uh, along with the video itself, I suppose. So I hope you guys can appreciate the fact that we strive to provide the most accurate data possible, and we prioritize that over everything else, financial gains and whatever else, and we don't care who comes out on top, whether it's AMD or NVIDIA, we just want to provide accurate results. So. That's that really. I'm sure many of you who've been watching us for a long time know that, and it's just unfortunate that we had some kind of weird issue uh, with Doom on the first attempt. 
Anyway, we've pulled that video. Uh, there was no real pressure from anyone to do that, so we just decided we weren't happy with the accuracy of that content. The video itself had over 3,000 likes with only about 20 dislikes, and there was a small community of AMD uh, fans who rightfully so weren't too happy with the results, though I suspect this video probably uh, won't have them you know, cheering us on. But anyway, that, that's how these things go sometimes. But we weren't happy with the results, so we decided to pull the video and we're now happy with these results and we are very confident in their accuracy. But I would just like to thank everyone who has been positive about this and supported us. And yeah, that's why we work so hard to try and deliver you guys the most accurate data possible. Very much appreciate the Harbour Unboxed community. And on that note, I think we'll end this one here. You can do the usual YouTube stuff if you like. We also have our Patreon Discord if you want to sign up there, you can do so. Our Patreon members really help us with things like this. Unfortunately, no one in our Patreon community has a 5600 XT and Doom Eternal, so they can't test the 1440p Ultra issue. Uh, again, we're still looking into that. We're not sort of shutting the book on that one and leaving it that. I would really like to know uh, if it is just an architectural and memory sort of compression thing, why AMD suffers so badly compared to NVIDIA when maxing out the VRAM. So again, something we definitely want to look into. I also put the word out on Twitter to see if anyone there had 5600 XT Doom Eternal. Uh, so far, no one has replied. So yeah, we're still looking to confirm that. Hopefully some other uh, tech media outlets will be able to look into that one a bit more closely with the ultra settings. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I need some sleep desperately. I'll see you again next time.